When I started Monster Hunter International, I knew two things. A friend of mine liked the books, and two, Larry Correa is really good at writing guns. Now that I read the book, I think I accidentally joined a cult. Like this video if you've accidentally joined a cult before, and subscribe if you want to join mine. Monster Hunter International is a fantasy military thriller that follows a man named Owen as he's attacked by his boss turned werewolf. Owen then finds out about the secret world of monsters and then is recruited by Monster Hunter International, a monster hunting company. As I said, when I picked up Monster Hunter International, I knew that Larry Correa writes guns well. A couple years back, I went to a con and he was on one of the panels at this con and everybody in the room was talking about how amazing he wrote guns. Besides feeling a little out of place of not knowing who this guy was, I also wondered if I would even like the books because I didn't know guns very well. It's kind of the same idea of why I don't always enjoy hard science fiction because I don't enjoy science a ton in real life. That ended up not being a problem. He writes it in a way that gun nuts can be super into it and people who aren't are just gonna gloss over those details. As plot and structure goes, Monster Hunter International is very fast paced. It was really hard to put down. Though if I had to pick like a slower part, it would be some dream sequences. Our main character, Owen, was dreaming, but he was inside somebody else's head. These scenes were really important to the plot and had a really good payoff in the end. However, in the moment, for me at least, they were kind of hard to get through because they lacked some grounding. Besides that, my only plot or structure complaint is slightly spoilery. I'm gonna do my best to talk about it in general terms and not spoil it for anybody. This is a common problem in like written forms of fiction. It's you have this POV character and the reader knows from the beginning because they're a POV character that they can't die. So you have a couple different ways that writers deal with this. Sometimes your main character is inexplicably indestructible. Maybe they're inexplicably lucky. A lot of authors create death loopholes. Or we even get the sudden introduction of a new point of view character so that we can watch the main character die. I'm not gonna say any more, except that the use of any of those often comes off lame and gimmicky. And whatever was used in this book was a slight negative to me when it comes to plot and structure. The characters in Monster Hunter International were often introduced as stereotypes, which rubbed me the wrong way. However, I really liked that even though they were introduced as stereotypes, by the end of the book, not a single one of them felt like stereotypes. And you got some grounding backstory details that made all of the characters really likable and their stereotypes even understandable. The way the characters were handled was a highlight to me. Personally, the romantic relationship in this book didn't bother me too much, but I could see people getting bugged by it. When it comes down to it, are you reading Monster Hunter International for a romantic relationship book? You're not. So any tropiness that there is to it, you just kind of don't care. The community around Monster Hunter International is unlike anything I've seen for other fandoms. When I finished Monster Hunter International, I looked up just what people were saying about it and I was really surprised by what I found. Typically when I look up a book, I find a booktube channel that has done a review about it and, and often the top videos are by the same channels every time. But with Monster Hunter International, none of the book reviews were done by booktube channels. In fact, I might be the first booktube channel to feature this book. Obviously, I can't say that for sure, but it kind of felt like that. First off, I want to applaud Larry Correa for encouraging reading and for expanding the sci-fi and fantasy community. But it did feel a little bit like I joined a cult because there's a lot of conversation around these books about how well Larry Correa writes guns. In fact, one of the channels literally does gun videos only and then Monster Hunter International. I'm obviously exaggerating this for fun, but there was also this video. It was just people putting on Monster Hunter International hats and taking pictures with Larry Correa, but that kind of stuff doesn't exist around most books. At this point, that kind of energy is reserved for things like Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Cosmere. We don't see that a lot, and especially in a book that is not as well known. These books have a really specialized following, and the following is really into it. 
honestly, it felt a lot like being in a room of a bunch of Wheel of Time fanatics when you've only read The Eye of the World and you thought it was all right. I recommend Monster Hunter International to anybody who likes a fast-paced monster-killing romp. Like fast-paced fantasy but not into monsters? Check out this video right here for a different fast-paced fantasy. Thanks for joining my adventure.